Thank you for watching our online service. At Cedar Grove Baptist Church, we exist to lead people to become passionate followers of Jesus Christ in their community and around the world to the glory of God. And the key to it all is the glory of God. This service today is presented to you as an opportunity for you to draw near to God. And we know what glorifies God the most, and that is when we love Him with our heart and our mind and our soul. So we pray that this service will be that very thing that will help you to accomplish that end today. To love God with your heart, mind, and soul, and in the end, glorify Him to the fullest. Thank you for watching. our God praise today the joy that we have in Jesus. Amen.
You know, each week of Advent, uh, we have a different family that comes and lights the candle and does the readings. And, uh, and like uh, last week, we are, um, we are lighting a candle today in memory. Um, in fact, uh, we're in memory of people that are no longer with us, but we know where they are. You know, we, we hadn't lost them. We know where they are. Um, the Hughes family is going to be our readers today, and that's Kathy and Donnie and their beautiful girls are going to come on up. And as they make their way up, joining them today is going to be Charlotte Vance and Chad. Uh, they're going to come up and stand beside them. In just a moment, you'll hear from Charlotte about the joy in her life, which was Carrie. Um, along with them is going to be uh, Frank Underwood. Sweet Betty's been gone for, for a year now, a little bit over, and, and joining him is Darla and Mike. And uh, Darla's going to say a few things about the joy that mom brought into their life. Before we even light the candle, you're going to hear about that joy, okay? So I'm going to let the Hughes family. Today we light the third candle of Advent. This is the candle of joy. As the coming of Jesus, our Savior, draws nearer, our joy builds in the anticipation of his birth. From the book of, of Isaiah, we read the words of our Lord. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating, for I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy, and its people as a delight. Isaiah 65, 18. We are thankful that his joy is not exclusive, but available to all as the angels spoke to the shepherds on the night that the Christ child was born. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Luke 2, 10 and 11. I want you to say how much that Carrie meant to me all these years and how much I miss him today. He'll always be in my heart. Um, as we light this, we'll just pull that down just a little bit. As we light um, the candle of joy today and celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, um, we do this in memory of my mom. And when I think about mom and I think about what brought her joy, I think first of her family. And anytime family was there, mom was happy. I think first of my dad and over 60 years of marriage, the memories they shared, the love they shared brought mom joy. I think of her kids, my sisters and my, myself, and the joy that we brought her growing up and mom was loved us she was there for us she was more than a mom she was a friend i think of the grandkids um she loved the grandkids and was so proud of them and their accomplishments and they loved their nana she loved her great grandkids and if any of you knew my mom the last eight years and was around her at any time then you probably have heard of brooklyn and braylon they were they brought her joy and um, this past year, before mom passed, she was able to have the joy of welcoming, welcoming three new grandkids. Um, 
So our oldest son had the twins, and then our youngest son had his first son. So her time with them was short, but the little time she had with them, I know how much joy she brought them. This church family brought her joy. Uh, she loved her family here. She found so much joy in the fellowship and friends that she made at this church. She loved spending time with her Sunday school class, Happy Hearts. Anytime we had fellowship here, Mom loved that. And um, the greatest joy that she found at this church was Christ. And there's none greater than that. And I, excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mom brought everyone so much joy herself. She was funny, caring, loving, kind, never met a stranger. And all the joy she brought us, though, nothing compared to the joy that we had a couple of years ago when we saw her baptized in that baptistry here at this church. Our pain is still great. We still hurt. It's still fresh, but this, as Christmas approaches, we find a joy in knowing that where she is, that she's with Christ, and because of he sent his son to die for us, we know that we can take joy knowing that we will see her again one day in heaven. Let us pray. We joyfully praise you, O Lord, for the fulfillment of your promise of a Savior and what that means in our lives. Thank you for the gift of salvation through the birth of your Son, Jesus. Help us not overlook the simple joys that peek into our everyday lives. This week in our Advent journey, open your eyes to the joy that surrounds us. Amen. But when I look back over the years of doing Advent at Cedar Grove Church, and, and, and especially when we uh, uh, go through specific weeks, you know, the week of weeks I, I love is, is joy. Because really, that, that's what our, 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 much of our world is, is void of today, and that is joy. And, and, and today we're going to kind of unpack that just a little bit. And, and just as we, we talked about uh, Advent, Advent is the coming or the arrival. You know, it's already here. You know, you, you don't have to leave here and go find it. Um, uh, joy is here, right? Uh, joy came in a person, and the person is Jesus. Um, Jesus is our hope. Uh, uh, Jesus is our love. And, and Jesus also is, is our joy. Um, for the last few weeks, we talked about uh, Advent. We talked about the first week, the coming of hope. You know, hope is a, a good thing. There's hope in Christ. There's hope in knowing that there's power in Christ. Uh, that is especially important for those of you that struggle with strongholds in your life. Uh, for those of you that wish that you could stop doing something and start doing something else. Can I tell you, uh, you, you don't have to, uh, uh, to, to get that on your own. There, there is power in that hope. Uh, there's power in what God can do uh, to give us that hope. There's forgiveness. Man, that beautiful thing called forgiveness, knowing that we are forgiven, knowing that we have security in Christ, knowing that we have a life, a life that is in Christ. See, that's why it, it, it just cannot just be something that is just moderately important. For some people, what we do is just... Uh, it's on the list, but it's not even at the top, you know. Uh, but yet, as Christians, and for those that, of us that have experienced that hope, we know it's on the top of the list. We know that, that, that there are a lot of people around us every day that, that, that go through life with, void of any hope whatsoever. And yet we know there, there's hope. And that hope is in Christ. Christ is our hope. 
Last week we talked about this thing called joy, uh, love, and how that love, there is love that is in Christ, there is love. There's that love of Christ that changes us, that constrains us, that compels us, that, that everything about us is, is changed by the love of God. You know, not by me loving him, but by him loving me. I, I couldn't love him apart from him loving me. You know, one of the most beautiful things I remember about Miss Betty. Uh, Miss Betty worked for a, uh, a, a parachurch organization, provided food for a lot of people and just, just a lot of neat things. But, but I tell you, she saw in her husband, Frank, years and years ago when Frank started, got right with God and wanted to live for Jesus and, and kept walking out that faith and wanting his wife to come and join him. And, and then lo and behold, she started coming to Sunday school and, and one thing after another, and then we were sitting on the, on the Lido deck uh, on a boat in the, in, the, in the Caribbean. And I was sitting there talking with Betty and we were talking about her faith and the importance of her faith and realizing realizing that the most important thing that needed to happen in her life was accepting the love of God. And then she would be able to express that love of God. See, the love of God changes us. It changes everything about us. It changes us, it constrains us, and then it compels us. We are compelled by that love of God. But today, as we talk about joy, we're going to talk about in Christ, in Christ, there is joy. Um, for just a few moments, I'm going to introduce to you someone that is foreign to joy. He's foreign to it. He don't understand it. He can't put his head around it. Um, for whatever reason, he's self-absorbed. He spends his life self-absorbed. The sun comes up for him every day. Everything about his life, the dog is his, life is his, everything is his. He just don't understand joy. He's, he's that quintessential person that, that's got to be happy. You know those people that have got to be happy. If mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. You ever heard that? Have, have you ever been that? Have you ever been that person that your whole life is about your happiness? You know, I got to get this job, I got to get this life, I got to get this. And if I got that, I'd be happy. Well, I'm going to tell you, I can trace it all the way back to, to, to a boy, to a person that just don't know joy at all. And, and, and I, I can tell you how I know that. Because the other night, my daughter had called me late at night, and she said, Dad, I want you to know something. I have to get Will to bed every night, and I'm laying in the bed with him in the darkness in that room, and Will, four years of age, a very unhappy boy starts spouting off things. And I'm, I'm going to just give you a few of the things that Will said, okay? Number one, I don't want you to be my mama anymore. Four years old. Two, I don't like being bored. I want to watch TV. You're on the naughty list for making me sad. <laughs> I don't want anything for Christmas. This happened three days ago. Now, a good night's sleep and breakfast, got, and he got over it. But how many people are like a four-year-old Will, right? Everything has got to be on my terms. It's got to be on my timetable. And, and if I ain't happy, you're not going to be happy. Well, can I tell you, if you came to find, find uh, hopefully hear of something that will help you to become more happy, you're not going to get it here today. Because I don't really think God is concerned about your happiness. I think God is absolutely concerned about your joy. Because I tell you that joy comes from holiness, not happiness. Because you can, you can have everything. You think, man, if I had this, I could be happy. You know, if, if I just had that, I could be happy. Well, and then you have that and you're still not happy. Why? Because what we need is joy. The joy, the joy of Jesus. For over 200 times in the New Testament, New Testament, you find that word joyous and joyful and joy. 
and then you, you see it over all, all, all those times you see joy. And every time you look at it in the scripture, it is referring to someone that can bring it to you. It's not referring to what you can do to attain it or, 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 or hopefully work hard enough to get it. It refers to a God that brings joy. That he comes to you with that joy. He offers it to you. He offers it to me. He wants us to have joy in our life. If he didn't, he wouldn't have put it in there over and over and over again. So for a few moments this morning, I want to talk about that joy. In Christ, there is joy. And in your pew Bible, if you have it open to Luke chapter 2, I'm going to read verse number 8. It said, in the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were terrified. And this is what you need to know about joy today. In Christ, there is that joy. But let me tell you about that joy. That joy comes to us. It comes to us. I mean, I know you've been at malls and places like that, and you look at the map or the layout. If you've ever been to Disney World or Universal, and, and you kind of not know where to go, and you look at this big map, and, and always there's that little dot that says, you are here, right here. This is where you are. Well, can I tell you that joy happens in that dot right where you are? You don't look at the map of how to get to joy and find joy way, way over there. No, joy is right where you are. It's right where you are today. That joy has come to us. Those shepherds, of all people, these nomadic nobodies were out there keeping watch over their flock by night, doing everything they, that they were required to do. Living a mundane, boring non-essential life so they feel felt and there in the midst of that mundane moment the angel of the lord showed up to them see isn't that the way it is isn't that the way that that, that we we realize that this joy is real is that suddenly the bible says and suddenly that the angel of the lord stood uh, 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 b uh, before them and the glory of the lord shone round about them suddenly is what the king james says that it was instantaneous. It stood there. The Lord was there. The angel was there. The message of hope was there. The message of love was there. And now this unbelievable message of joy showed up. And the joy showed up. See, that's what happens in our life. Joy is not a circumstance of things happening to us. Happiness is circumstantial. Joy is something that we experience at that moment. That we surrendered our life. That we surrendered our hope is Him. Our love is Him. And then all of a sudden what comes with hope and love is joy. And that is an emotion, by the way. And that is the byproduct of, 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 of love and hope happening in your life is joy. Because if, if love and and, and and, and hope is working in you, the byproduct of, of that is hope. It's that joy that comes from that hope and that, and that love. So think about it. This beautiful thing called joy, the arrival of it. You don't, you don't have to, uh, uh, to go to somewhere to find it. You know, people all the time want joy in their life. And they think, man, if I just had a better job, I'd have more joy. And then they get a better job and they don't have more joy. Why? Because guess what Ch didn't change? They didn't change. The job changed. Boy, if I had another marriage, if I just had another person, or if I just had another child, or if I just had another car or another whatever, and then all of a sudden they get all of those things and there's no joy. Why? Because circumstances changed, but they didn't change. See, joy comes to a person. And joy comes through Jesus. Jesus Christ is our joy. Suddenly, suddenly, everything about those shepherds' lives changed because the Lord showed up in their life. Suddenly, in our life, 
Everything can change if we understand that our joy is secure in the hope and the love of Jesus. Suddenly, everything changes. Secondly, in Christ there is joy, and he talks about this joy and how personal this joy is. In fact, if you if you look in your pew Bible at verse number 10, it starts out, but the angel said to them, but it comes after they were so afraid. They were terrified in verse number 9. And then verse number 10, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will, shall be for all the people today in the city of David. A Savior was born for you who is the Messiah, the Lord, this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped tightly in linen cloth or in, in cloth and lying in a manger. I mean, right there, this joy is a personal thing. It's personal. I love the way it says it. I bring unto you good news of great joy. Good news. The good news of the gospel, the good news of the, uh, of the coming of Jesus Christ, that is good news. But let me tell you what brings great joy when you respond to good news. For instance, if, if I got a letter in the mail from you next week with an offering envelope stacked full of money because you drove across the state line and you won the lottery, I would say, man, that is great news. But if I got a letter saying that somebody went over there and bought me a lottery ticket that I don't support, and I won the lottery, that would be great joy. Why? Because it's personal. It becomes personal. See, Christmas is about Christ coming and doing something personal in our life. It's our personal faith. It's our personal journey. It's our personal lives that have been changed. And we've been changed by the presence of Jesus. He says, don't be afraid. I proclaim him to you good news, great joy for all people. Because today in the city of David is a Savior. A Savior. Imagine that, a Savior. Christ is our Savior. What do Saviors do? Saviors save us. They save us from ourselves, but more importantly, they save us from our sin. That's what Christ has done. And by saving us from our sin, he also saves us from a wasted life. Can you imagine the number of people that die every day in America and around this world? They die and they have never lived. They die, but they never really lived. Because only a Savior can make us live. Only the forgiveness of our sins can we have life. Jesus is our joy. And that joy that is in Christ is personal. And it should be personal to every one of us. It is personal. Christ came for me. Christ died on the cross for my personal sin so that I can have a personal relationship with him so that I can personally be changed so I can personally have eternal life through Jesus Christ my Lord so everything about it is personal isn't it imagine those shepherds out there in that in that field by night looking at the most boring job in the world is looking at clumps of, uh, of wool just laying there, not moving, and all of a sudden the angel shows up. Good news, great joy for you today in the city of David is born a Savior. This is his name. Christ is the Lord. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine being off everybody's radar and all of a sudden God just pings you and he comes to right where you are? right where you are. And he said, I've got good news. And it could be great joy. It's all according to what you do with the Savior, who is Christ the Lord. The third thing, 
So I want you to know that in Christ there is joy. In verse 17, it says that this joy is shared. And after seeing them, they reported the message and that they were told this child. And, and all, heard, all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Can I tell you how you know it's real joy? Is that you don't want to keep it just to yourself. It's too good to keep to yourself. It is a joy that needs to be declared. It's a joy that needs to be shared. It is a joy that people need to know that their life can be finally put together and they can finally have peace and they can finally have love that they've longed for and hope that they just thought they could never have and they can have it in Jesus and that will bring them joy. And when you have that joy, Man, you want to share that joy, don't you? You know, you think about the people in your life over these next two weeks. The people you don't see but once a year, or maybe the people you don't see even that often. Just imagine what would happen if you talked about that great joy that is in you and how you experience that great joy. What are the, what are the one of two responses that they can give? They can reject it, or their life can be changed because of it. Why is it that something that will last for all of eternity and something that it should change us from, from the top of our head to the tips of our toes, why is it that something that important is just completely, completely rejected? I'll tell you, it's because we need God to do something in our life to renew the joy that Jesus Christ came to give. Because those shepherds, they were nobodies. They made their way, they made haste and made their way to Bethlehem, just as the angel said, they found the babe lying in a manger wrapped in swaddling cloth. And just as the scripture says, after seeing this, they reported what they, had, uh, what they were told about this child and all her who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. Everybody heard it, were amazed by it. I tell you, the greatest joy ever in your life as a follower of Christ, and knowing that joy is helping other people find that joy. Helping others to know there's joy. And that joy is in Jesus. Last week at First Priority, we've been dealing for, for a month, leading up. To the greatest gift of all. I'm sitting on that gym floor, about 300 middle schoolers. And I'm telling you, it's just, you can hear a pin drop. The kids read the text, talked about the grace of God, the forgiveness of God, the love of God, the hope of God. And at the end, I get to come up and I get to ask them, just bow your heads, close your eyes for a moment. How many of you this week, you just been, couldn't wait to realize that, hey, I want this gift of God, this gift of Jesus. I want this gift of eternal life. I want the joy that only Jesus can give me. I'm telling you kids that got everything you could imagine. All over that room, kids were just raising their hands. Kids were just saying, I want that, I want Jesus. I want the joy Jesus. What age did you get to where you don't want that no more? How cold and hard does a person have to be? Not tender and pliable as a fourth, fifth, or sixth grader. Why is it that sometimes the very people that should be the most joyous are not. Because oftentimes, it's just like that two verse word of scripture. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 14 says, rejoice always. Rejoice always. What does that mean? It means rejoice always. When does that stop? When do we stop rejoicing always? 
The very moment in our life that we put God's priorities second to our priorities. Because there is zero joy that comes into our life when we put God second. There's no joy until the Lord Jesus is first. There's joy, and that joy is in Jesus. Let's pray. If you'll read sometime today the rest of that chapter, you'll read that Joseph and Mary and baby Jesus, they made their way to Jerusalem. And there was a guy there in the temple named Simeon. The Bible says he was a righteous and devout man. He was looking forward to the consolation and the Holy Spirit was on him. And he was guided by the Holy Spirit and he made his way to Mary and Joseph. And he said, he took, took him in his arms and he praised God and said, now master, you can dismiss your servant in peace as you promise." For my eyes have seen your salvation. Simeon waited and waited and waited. He got old waiting. But he did not wait in vain. God came to Simeon. And Simeon saw the hope, the love, and the joy that's in Jesus. And he said, now, Lord, let me go because I have held and beheld the hope, the love, and the joy. Who is Jesus? If you have not trusted the Lord Jesus to be your hope, your love, your joy, today is a good day. It's a good day to be honest. I mean, there's one thing that's going to be for certain one day that you're going to have to give an account. Every one of us will. Jesus didn't come into our life to make our life miserable from this day forward. He comes into our life to change our life from this day forward so we don't have to waste it. So today, joy's here. It's right where you're sitting today. And Jesus is waiting on you just to say, yes, Lord. I trust you. I yield my life to you. And I've wandered away, and the joy is left, but I want you to restore that joy to me because I'm returning. I'm repenting. I'm asking. Father God, for these next couple of moments, Lord, during this... Um, time of response, Lord, the response we need to make today is to you. For some of us that have gotten so preoccupied with everything else, and we've been robbed. We've been robbed. Father, your word tells us that the thief comes but to steal and kill and destroy our life, but you come that we might have life and joy abundantly. Lord, today we want what you want. Not what we want. We want what you want. And Father, and you will help us to change the wants in our life. You'll change that. But we want what you want. And you want us to surrender to you. For these next few moments, 
as you make the altar out of that pew where you are today, right there in that spot where you are, the hope has come. Would you respond to that hope of Jesus today? That's where it leads us. No. 